So here we are in Denmark for the Danish National Brass Band Championships of 2021. It is so good to be back and it looks like banding is returning across the world in force. Strange thing here in Denmark, usually when a composer gets a piece listed for the national championships, it's a feather in their cap and it's a bit of a coup. But to get all four test pieces listed as the same composer, there must have been some money changed hands somewhere, I think. It's my pleasure to welcome the composer of every test piece here in Denmark, Johnny Bates. Johnny, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. First of all, how do you manage to get all four test pieces at a national championships? Well, I've been asking myself the same question, really. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the, the organisational committee of the Danish Nationals, they've uh, been in touch with me over the last few years, really asking about any new pieces I've, I've written, what might be suitable for the championships. I think as a, as a competition, they're certainly one of the more kind of forward-thinking, innovative mm. yes, they are. Um, competitions on, on the scene at the moment. So they're always trying to push forward and encourage new music from new composers. So they've been quite keen to use my music for a few years' time and um, nothing really came about. And then the pandemic obviously hit and it got a bit, bit quieter so I was in touch with uh, Stefan on the organizational team and he mm. suggested can you list me a piece which might be suitable for each section so I thought yeah that'll be great I might get one picked or maybe even two that, that'd be cool and then I got a message a few weeks later saying yeah we really like all these four pieces can we actually use all four for the whole championships so it's yes yeah, as you say it's, it's a huge honor um, it's sort of the first time I've had anything like this um, in, in my comp compositional career so far and I'm really looking forward to hearing all the bands well, it certainly makes the result ceremony a bit shorter anyway, <laughs> just to have yeah. one composer up there. So um, talk us through each of the, the pieces, first of all, Johnny, because you're also going to be adjudicating as well this weekend. Yep. And so you're going to be a busy guy all weekend. We're only probably going to see you on Sunday morning after everything's mm -hmm. uh, done and dusted. So start us off with the third section. What's the piece and what are you going to be looking for? Yeah, so the piece of the third section is actually probably the, the oldest of the pieces which have been played this week, and It's uh, a piece called Repton Fantasy. Now, this was actually composed of a national children's band um, probably around six or seven years ago now. And it's it's really designed as a concert piece, I think. It's, it's an extended concert work. It's got um, artifacts like body percussion and things you wouldn't normally expect here on a contest stage. But again, it's one of those where... The, the committee have obviously thought this is an opportunity to be quite innovative and ask the bands to do something a little bit different and I just want the bands to enjoy it. It's it's a fun piece, there's lots of themes which people people will recognise. For example, the reason I chose Repton is that the National Children's Brass Band and the National Youth Brass Band course um, hold their annual courses in Repton at Absolutely. Repton School. Yes, yes. And obviously Repton School, well Repton is, as a place is famous for two things. The hymn tune Repton, which is often better known as Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, yep. uh, which was set by Parry at Repton School. And also one of probably Repton School's most famous um, alumni was Roald Dahl, the children's writer. Fantastic. So when I was writing the piece, he had a fantastic hymn tune to work with, but also all these brilliant novels. So there's, there's a section um, which is all dedicated to Roald Dahl's works, um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Cat in the Hat, Matilda, all these sort of things. And then the outer movements are all based around the hymn tune Repton. So it really is an extended concert work. And I think those who can just find the fun in the music and really get into the spirit of it without trying to take it too seriously, obviously looking for the, the kind of basics of is it in tune, is it together? Um, but realistically, the best band who will um, get into the spirit of music ones which will probably come to the fore. Yeah, and why can't contest works be fun? Exactly, why yeah, can't we? Exactly. And I'm hoping in this instance they're going to be. We're really looking forward to it, so we're going to be listening to a few bands playing that. So, moving to the second section, Johnny, what have you had selected for us? So, the second section piece is actually um, quite a unique piece for me, really. It's, it's a piece called Ex Terra Lucem, uh, which is, for those... Um, viewers who aren't familiar with the Latin motto of the town of St Helens in the northwest of Manchester, I'm sure, I'm sure they're all familiar with it, but um, that is the is the motto for the town. Now I wrote this piece for the St Helens Youth Brass Band when one of my my closest friends took over as musical director, and again I wrote it really as a concert piece. It's it's just it's very very light hearted in nature. It's very very melodic, um, full and rhythm driven. Um, but actually, the, the way this one was constructed, where, as I said, for Repton, you've got um, existing Roald Dahl uh, novels and you've got the, the hymn tune Repton, I actually constructed pretty much all of this piece uh, by placing a musical stave over the roof of St. Helens Town Hall. Now, it's one of these fantastic Gothic buildings which has got all sorts of shapes and lines and contours. And if you kind of just draw dot to dot, 
around the, where each line goes on the stave it gives you a melody and pretty much all the way through this 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 test piece um there's just hints of that melody it's it's, it's all based on the roof of a building which is is really quite unique but it, it's it was used in the uh, regional championships that's in, right. in the uk back yes. in 2018 and it it seemed to go down really well so mm. i'm hoping the bands have, have found it equally enjoyable to work on in denmark yeah and it, again it's it's a style of your writing that it becomes very very descriptive mm. yeah it's um it's certainly painting pictures. Um, I mean, the, the motto ex terra lucia means from the ground light. Mm. So the final movement is based all around that, that idea of from the ground light, building up from something really low and dark and kind of deep to something more glorious and kind of celebratory. Um, but I think, as you say, it, it's a common theme with all kind of four works, but there's, there's certainly heavy elements of melody, but it's not contrived, it's not cliched, it's not predictable. It's still quite trying to push the boundaries of what brass bands would normally be expected to play. Um, in, in these sort of championships over the years. It's trying to move the musical language forward without taking it so far in one jump that people get switched off. It's, it's, yeah. it's edging yeah. people into yeah. a more contemporary sound world. Fantastic. And which of the soloists are going to have a sleepless night? So the big on one's really uh, probably the cornet. <laughs> I would say the cornet and the euphonium have got a few technical ones. There's, mm. a, there's a beautiful um, flugel melody which takes over the second movement. So it's, it's, it's tried to feature everyone, really. Um, as a tenor horn player, I've often bemoaned how little we always have to do in test pieces. <laughs> so I think every single piece which has been played this weekend is, uh, will certainly keep the tenor horn players active. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I never want to leave the soloist board. Um, there's, there's so many pieces you play where you see just the cornet and euphonium having all the limelight. So I want to make sure that the interesting parts are passed around the band room. Yeah. And from what I remember of this uh, from the regionals, it's a pretty good percussion part as well, yeah. but v quite easy to dominate. So probably something that you'd you'd want to guard against. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's quite thickly scored. I mean, um, I think long gone are the days where percussion are kind of just treated as separate to the band. They're kind of the, the noisy ones at the back. Um, I think nowadays they're certainly more integrated into the sound. You can create mm. a lot more texture. Absolutely. They're, they're certainly uh, a really in integral part of brass band composition. So I've tried to use that as much as I can whilst being sensible in terms of numbers and instrumentation. Yeah. No, you can't be giving tuba bells and six octave marimbas and I don't know crotals to you know the fourth section. You have to kind of be quite sensitive with what you pick. But it's it's certainly in in that um, way of being slightly more in depth with the scoring. It does pose its challenges for for balance with rest of the band because yeah. um, a lot of the time the percussion are the noisy ones in the back. So, of course they are. Of course uh, they are. It certainly gives them opportunity just to be slightly more <laughs> refined and blend into the core of the band. Wonderful. If I could and I wouldn't ever presume to give you a, a tip as an adjudicator, but if I could, I'd say always make a note about the percussion because they never get, ever get mentioned in remarks unless no. they do something horrifically wrong. Yeah. So give, give a little note to the shed builders at the back if you don't mind. So let's move up to the first section. Mm -hmm. um, now, the first section and the elite section here in Denmark <coughs> play the set work and an own choice work as well. Mm -hmm. So the set work is going to be on, on Friday evening yeah. and it's going to open the uh, the contesting weekend. So what have you got in store for us for that? Okay, so the first section is actually the newest piece I've written. Um, I think like lots of us um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were given our you know two hours of exercise a day where we allowed out of the house and then you have to go back inside. So I actually took to going on quite long walks. I lived in the middle of Manchester. It was about an hour's walk out to Salford Quays, all near Old Trafford and the BBC mm. and Media City. Really beautiful walking up the canal and the river and um, I had a nice little route really. So I'd always stick my headphones on and just listen to some music while I was on this, this walk. And I kind of, I thought at the time I've not written a tribute piece to a composer. I mean, there's so many great band pieces, you know, your Paganini variations, Talis variations. There's, there's so many pieces dedicated to composers. I mean, Philip Wilby, whilst, you know, Vienna Nights isn't strictly Mozart variations, it's based on you Mozart. You can hear it throughout. Yeah, of course can't. you can. You know, yeah. it's, it's all kind of tribute attributed to these composers. Mm. I'd never done that. So I, I thought, well, Grieg is, is a fantastic composer, um, writes brilliant melodies, in, innovative harmonies. Um, and I thought, well, I'll listen to some Grieg. So mm. I listened to... I seem to think it was an, uh, an album by the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment. Um, just full albums of it, both Peer Gint Suites uh, and Oboe Concertos and things like that. So um, loads and loads of different Greek music. I had all the, this music kind of swimming around in my head and I thought I'm going to write a test piece based on, on Greek variations. 
um, on, on Grieg, sorry. And, and this is where Grieg Variations was born. So it's not your kind of stereotypical in the hall of a mountain king and mourning, which everybody knows. It, it's looking slightly more into the lesser known themes of Grieg. Your Solveig song um, features quite heavily. Pergint 2, in fact, quite a lot of the Pergint 2 suite is, is featured um, heavily. And just beautiful it. music. It is. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think when I started out of the pandemic, I thought I finally got some time to write. I mean, I'm, I love writing and it's great, but obviously with my work as a tenor horn player and conductor it, it the, the time was a little bit limited so I thought well actually I've got a big period of time now lower section bands are bereft of new music you know all the new music gets written for the elite level and the, the lower section are often forgotten about so I, I set out at the beginning of the lockdown that for the next 12 months I'm just going to write a load of new music for the lower sections because they need it they need to be inspired by having new music to play as of much course as the they do. do of so, course they do so this was my plan here um, yeah. you know write a, a piece around first second section sort of level New music, innovative ideas, something new for people to get stuck into. Um, so that's where Greek Variations was born from. So that, that was the first section. And then, yeah, the, the championship section work is a piece called Songs of Ascent, which I wrote for the 2019 uh, Royal Norman College of Music Festival of Brass. Now, every year at the RNCM Festival, they have a, well, at least one or two featured composers. And that mm. year, the featured composer was John McCabe, mm. who's certainly one of my favourite composers when you look at a piece like Cloudcatcher Fells, Salamander, Ugh. it's it's incredible, incredible writing. Stuff. It's, it's, yes. it's far before its generation mm. for the musical output he was giving. So it's a tribute piece to John McCabe, really. Um, there's certainly elements of his writing you'll hear throughout it. Uh, it's certainly the, more, the most kind of uh, descriptive and uh, contemporary, to put it in that kind of cliched bracket of, of the four test pieces being used. Um, a lot of the kind of musical material is based uh, around a number of the songs of Ascent, which are a, a list of the Psalms. Um, from from the Bible, it's a set um, number. I seem to think it's from like seventeen to forty one, which are listed as the songs of ascent, mm. which also includes "Guide Me, O Thy Great Redeemer." So the the central section is is very much based around that that hymn tune. There's a big solo for tenor horn, as I was alluding to. Um, I couldn't resist. So there's a tenor horn and bass trombone duet. I mean, when do you hear a bass trombone player being given what a combination to play lyrical? Yeah, you know, it's normally the bass trombone feature is loud and low. This is very sweet and very melodic. So it's testing people in different ways. They're not always used to being tested, but again, trying to make sure there's elements of melody for the audience to latch onto and the players to latch onto. There's certainly even distribution of technique around all the parts, so everyone's got something to get stuck into. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, it's, it's very much a tribute to certainly one of my compositional idols in John McCabe. Mm -hmm. John McCabe's works were fantastic chord structures mm. and the way he used to put chords together to describe different aspects of what he was um, was writing was was just incredible but so difficult mm. to play as well is this going to be a pitfall for bands who are playing songs of ascent i think it could be yeah um i remember when it was premiered um i remember looking at the score and thinking technically it's not that hard there's there's no real passages of incredible technical virtuosity mm. like you hear in lots of test pieces composed nowadays uh, like European Championships and stuff where you, you can sit there and just be bewildered by a band's yes. <laughs> amazing technical <laughs> yeah. dexterity. This one on paper looks quite simple but um, for example Cloudcatcher Fells technique wise is probably second section but it's so difficult to perform because you have balance you have intonation you have to you listen have stamina. everywhere yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything's exposed all the yes. lines are very very isolated which is, mm. is very similar in this piece it's, mm. I tried to kind of um, mirror the composition on Cloudcatcher. It's, it's certainly my favourite piece of brass band li literature I've, I've had the pleasure of conducting mm. and, and playing. Mm. So it's very similar. It, it's, it's not a massive virtuoso showpiece, but musically there's a lot behind the music. Um, there's a lot of very kind of complex chords to get the right balance, and there's a lot of sound words between muting and open voices, which conductors need to find the right balance to make sure everything speaks at the right mm. volumes it should. So it's, it's very much in the mould of um, lots of the kind of classic John McCabe works. Yeah. We can't wait. Johnny, that's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for explaining the pieces and congratulations on getting a clean sweep over <laughs> here. I think we're all going to have a fantastic weekend over here in Aarhus. Now, the c competition is going to kick off in just a few minutes and we cannot wait. So for everybody who's watching around the world here on Brass Pass TV, we're going to be back shortly with the start of section one on the set work and it's going to be the start of a super weekend here in Denmark. Don't go away. <laughs>